Hello, Noswaitha. Good evening. Kroisoti Amser Story Adventure. Welcome to the Venture Story Time. For those of you who just watched, there seems to have been uh, a technical problem, but we're back now. Um, you join us here where we've been reading uh, The Worst Witch and we're up to chapter five, so we'll get to that in a short while. Uh, but first, I wanted to uh, say that I hope that you've all seen um, Karen's earlier video on Facebook where she sang There's an Owl in the Tree. Uh, and we're hoping to, well, I'm going to try and replicate that myself at the end of this video, although I don't think I'm going to do as good a job as Karen. Um, there was a few of you who commented on the video yesterday, uh, so a big shout out to Cl Kim, Clawley and Ellie Doughty. Uh, sorry I didn't pick up your comments yesterday. Um, I'm going to try and load the video on my laptop so I can keep up with everybody's comments. Um, but we've already had a couple of comments on Karen's video, so... Carly Braisdell, uh, she said Georgie cried when you started talking, uh, but he sang along and keeps asking for it. That's lovely. Uh, Chantelle McKenzie said Kenzie cried, uh, now keeps asking as well. Uh, misses you all loads, as do we all. Uh, it's uh, not the same without seeing the uh, early years centre staff first thing in the morning. Jordan Jones says Archie said Karen is very silly. You're right, uh, Jordan Jones, Karen is very silly. And uh, Playground Manager Bronson uh, also said, lovely Karen, and right you are Bronson. That was very lovely of Karen. And we're hoping that we can bring you um, similar videos and content as the weeks go on, uh, including from our play team, our Val project, and perhaps even Malcolm King himself. That would be very good. Uh, definitely a, a good storyteller. I'm um, not sure how long these videos would be, though. Anyway, without further ado, if you want to comment, uh, I'm going to have the laptop next to me today, um, so I'll be keeping an eye on the comments section. Please let us know that you're watching um, and any messages you want to give out to everybody. Um, let's see. Okay, so Venture, there we go. So we've been reading The Worst Witch by Jill Murphy, and we're up to chapter five. So, so far... We've met Mildred Hubble and her friend Maud, who both attend Miss Cackle's Academy, which is a castle high up on a hill but shrouded by mist, so we don't always see what's going on up there. Uh, we also saw Mildred and her students, fellow students, get a cat, uh, but unlike everybody else, uh, Mildred's cat was a tabby cat. It wasn't a black one. We also then met Ethel Hallow. Uh, Ethel is the sort of uh, swatty girl of... Oh, that's not good actually. Swats are good. It's good to be swatty. She's the she's a more bullying, controlling uh, girl. Uh, we met her, and she took the Mickey out of Mildred because Mildred cheated and put her cat in her satchel on the broomstick because uh, the cat was afraid of flying. Um, and in that encounter with Ethel, Mildred turned her into a pig. <coughs> so Ethel was not very happy at all. Um, and there's a picture there of Mildred turning Ethel into a pig. <laughs> I'm sure Ethel won't forget about that. Um, then afterwards, Mildred and Maud um, had a potions test uh, in Miss Hardbroom's class. Now, Miss Hardbroom is their form mistress. She's very strict um, and quite scary. And uh, Mildred and Maud got it wrong. And they didn't create a laughing potion. Uh, they created a disappearing potion which meant that Mildred had to go to Miss Cackle's office. And that's where we're up to. So let's find... Oh, there's Mildred in Miss Cackle's office. So let's find chapter five and carry on the story. So get yourself a nice drink. I've got a pan of day, a cup of tea tonight in my uh, UNCRC mug. I've also got my hot water bottle, but I don't think I'll need it tonight because it's it's getting warmer and it's getting lighter out there. So uh, I hope you've all had a lovely day. So here we go. Chapter five. The following morning, Miss Hardbroom strode into the classroom looking thoughtful. She was wearing a new grey and black striped dress with a brooch on the shoulder. And there's a picture of Miss Hardbroom there. Good morning, girls, she greeted them, not as sharply as usual. Good morning, Miss Hardbroom, chorused the girls. Their form mistress arranged the books on her desk and surveyed the class. 
I have something to tell you girls, she began, that gives me great pleasure on one hand, yet causes me some worry on the other. Here she shot a glance at Mildred. As you know, the Halloween celebrations take place in two weeks' time, and it is customary for a display to be presented by the school. This year, our class has been chosen to present the display. There were gasps of delight. <gasps> of course, Miss Hargroom went on, it is a great honour, but also a responsibility. As Miss Cackle's Academy has a high reputation, which we don't want to spoil, do we? Last year, Form 3 produced a play, which was highly praised. And I thought that this year we might present a broomstick formation team. Ooh. You will need a lot of practice, as some of you are not too steady on your broomsticks yet. But I am quite certain that we could give an interesting and successful performance. Is there anyone who would prefer, prefer, prefer to do something else? She looked around piercingly at the girls who all shrank in their seats and would not have dared to disagree, even if they'd wanted to. Good, said Miss Hardbroom. Then it is settled. We shall present a broomstick formation team. Let us go down to the yard and begin to practice at once. Fetch your broomsticks and be outside in two minutes. With which words she vanished. The girls excitedly clattered from the room and rushed along the corridors to find their broomsticks, which were kept in their own rooms. The spiral staircase rang with the sound of hobnailed boots as the girls rushed down to the yard, where they found Miss Hardbroom waiting for them. First of all, you'd better take a practice flight, she said. Form an orderly crocodile and go around the school and back. Off they flew in an orderly but rather wobbly uh, procession around the school. Quite good girls, said Miss Hardbroom as they lined up in front of her. You were swaying about rather badly, Mildred, but apart from that you did quite well. Now, I have made out a list of the things that we will be doing. First, a single line. This should be uh, uh, with each pupil sinking and rising alternatively. This should be comparatively easy. Secondly, a flying V, similar to uh, wild geese in flight. Then, nose diving in the yard and swooping up just before you reach the ground. That will be the most difficult part of all. Mildred and Maud exchanged horrified glances. And finally, you will form a circle in the air, each broomstick touching the next. Any questions? No? Very well. We shall begin the first item immediately. What was the first item, Mildred? Uh, uh, nose diving in the yard, Miss Hardbroom? Wrong. Ethel, do you remember? We are to form a line, each pupil sinking and rising alternatively, rep replied Ethel, word perfectly as always. Correct, Miss Hardbroom said, with a frosty glare at Mildred. We shall practice all this morning and every morning until the celebrations. And perhaps this afternoon, if I can persuade Miss Bat to allow you to miss your chanting lessons. They worked very hard for the next two weeks. Every spare minute was spent practising. And by the time Halloween arrived, the display was quite a joy to watch. Mildred's hat, or sorry, Maud's hat, was squashed like a concertina from the time when she had not pulled up from the nosedive during practice. But apart from that, there'd been hardly any trouble at all. Even from Mildred, who was making a special effort to be good and thoughtful. The day before Halloween, Miss Hardbroom lined up her class in the yard 
to give them a few final words of advice. I'm very pleased with you girls, she said almost pleasantly. Now, you will be wearing your best robes tomorrow, so I hope they will be cleaned and pressed. As she said this, she caught sight of Mildred's broomstick. Now, if you remember, Mildred snapped her broomstick in the first chapter. Mildred, why is there a bundle of sticky tape in the middle of your broomstick? Well, I'm afraid I broke it during the... Uh, uh, I, I broke it in half during the f f first week of term, admitted Mildred. Ethel giggled. <laughs> I see, said Miss Hardbroom. Well, you certainly can't use that one in your display. Ethel, I seem to remember that you have a spare one. Perhaps you could lend it to Mildred. Oh, Miss Hardbroom, cried Ethel. It was given to me as a birthday present. I shouldn't want anything to happen to it. Miss Harbroom fixed Ethel with one of her nastiest looks. If that's how you feel, Ethel, she said in an icy tone, then... Oh, I, I didn't mean I won't lend it, Miss Harbroom, Ethel said meekly. I'll go and fetch it now. And she ran into the school. Ethel had never forgotten the time that Mildred had turned her into a pig. <coughs> and as she made her way up the spiral staircase, she suddenly thought of a marvellous way of taking her revenge. Ethel really wasn't a nice person at all. I'll fix you, Mildred Hubble, she cackled to herself as she took the broomstick out of the cupboard. Now listen to me, broom. This is very important. What's she up to? Here's the broom, Mildred, called Ethel. I'll leave it propped up against the wall. Thanks very much, replied Mildred, delighted that Ethel was being so nice, for the two hadn't spoken since the pig episode. <coughs> it's very kind of you. Hmm. Not at all, said Ethel, smiling wickedly to herself as she went back into the school. Hmm, what's Ethel up to, I wonder? Something tells me it's no good. And there's a picture there of the girls flying with the broomsticks. And there's also a picture <laughs> of Mildred on her broomstick with Ethel calling to say that she's brought her a spare. So that's chapter five. Well, I suppose we'll find out how the uh, broomstick display goes and what Ethel was up to with her broomstick in the next chapter, which we hope to bring you tomorrow. So we've had a few people watching with us and a few comments. So Nicholas James has been watching with us, Sarah Roberts. Oh, that reminds me, the Gwenro Valley Steering Group, a big shout out to you. Uh, I've been talking to them this afternoon and they uh, are working with Gwenro Valley, the Ventures sister playground on the other side of Kaya Park. Uh, Louise Haggerty has been watching. She says, hi, Sean. Hope you're well. Stay safe from Lily. Oh, and you as well, Lily. I've been loving all the updates uh, from you and your mum on Facebook and your lovely rainbows in the window. Be sure to keep sending in your messages and anything that you want to share with us at the venture. Karen Mills. Hello, Karen. I'm Maureen Jones. That's so Karen and Maureen from the Early Years Centre. Hello to you both. Mel Davis from the Play and Youth Support team. Lovely to have you watching with us as well, Mel. Karen Mills, I love story time. <laughs> you know what? I love it too because it makes me feel like I'm connected to all my old friends once again. And Carly Braystall, somebody else from Gwenro Valley, uh, has been watching too. Big shout out to you. So now, ooh, like I said, Karen from the early years uh, gave a lovely song uh, to our Facebook page earlier and we're hoping that content like that will continue as the weeks go on not only from our early years centre but also from our Val project and our play team and perhaps even uh, Malcolm King and Julie it would be lovely to hear from them too and if you want to send anything in please please comment get in touch with us on Facebook uh, we're going to try and put some of this on YouTube as well because I know that's easier for some people to uh, access um, and you can also use our website theventurexum.com uh, we're also on twitter at the 
Adventure 78. Get in touch. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to be able to share with everybody what you've been doing as well. So before we go, I'm going to follow Karen's lead and sing a song, which is There's an owl in the tree, twit woo twit woo There's an owl in the tree, twit woo twit woo There's an owl in the tree, there's an owl in the tree, there's an owl in the tree, twit woo twit woo <laughs> Well, it's been lovely for you all to join me tonight. Uh, I hope I've managed to say hello to everybody. Um, so now it's time to say Dioch and Willio. Thank you for watching. Um, hopefully I'll see you all very soon. Craig with the Sweet dreams. Nostar. Good night. And I'll see you soon. Tataruan.